Welcome back. So yesterday we observed me attempting to get multivariant Stockfish 12 built for Linux. Today we'll see me try to get it built for Windows. Um, so here we can see I've got um, here's my GitHub repository for multivariant Stockfish and um, we successfully built on GitHub, just doing regression tests. Uh, on Travis, we built for a variety of Linux platforms. And unfortunately, my addition of a new parameter uh, for enabling uh, the usage of neural networks, um, that parameter is not being defaulted in AppVayer. And I really don't know how to get things to build in at Um I don't know that I can really show all my uh, settings here. Uh, some of these seem to be secrets or something that, um, or some of the settings are secrets and I don't want to flash uh, those secrets on this video. So I'm a bit lost as to how to force uh, AppVayer to use settings, but we'll figure it out. Um, AppVayer is configured by a file appvayer.yml. Um, uh, there is also an appvayer.yml. In one of these directories, in the stockfish repo, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to navigate on Linux. Um, okay, so there is actually an issue. Last time we tried to do an AppVayer build, we had to figure things out. So, um, yeah, where was that? Was it deploy app layer? Okay, so this is the configuration for deploying the builds. Um, and this contains some secrets as well. Although, <laughs> I mean, we published this, so I shouldn't be afraid to show this on screen. You can find this too. Um, yeah, I need to find a way to better do that. That's my mistake. But also, like, there's pre release draft. This is strictly about deployment. Um, and that is public, so there's no need for me to fear showing that. Um, but no, we're not interested in the deploy AppVayer file, we're more interested in this. Um, the how do I build things scripts that are called at the beginning before cloning the repo so we call the CMake version and get the MS build version um, and now I need to figure out Somehow here, um, we determine what build parameters to use. Oh, dollar A is the list of build parameters. Oh no, this is the binary file name that we're producing without the exe extension. Um, so before build, we need to figure out what kind of binary we're building based on the platform that we're building in. Um, uh, 
I just need to figure out how to add one parameter in here such that AppVayer can build using that one parameter. And that's use underscore NNUE. Um, Ideally, I could parameterize that, but let's not worry about that just yet. On the Linux build, I need to parameterize that. Here, I'm not so sure that I do. Um, CMake 3.17. There's a typo. Okay, so we're generating the CMake list set text without a BOM, which is a bill of manifest, indicating what um, dependencies are required, I guess. At least if that means the same thing here as it does with uh, Maven. Maybe BOM refers to a different concept here. So dollar $t, I think, represents a stream of output, which we're going to want to write, I guess, via the system IO file. So I would prefer up here to provide my additional parameter. Um, Um, before build, PS, I'm assuming this is not a process list, but um, is instead a PowerShell. If this is a PowerShell command, perhaps I can try it. Uh, this is going to be an adventure. So, let's venture into the unknown. Where's my clone button? Where's my clone button from here? Somewhere here. Um, I mean, I don't really need it, um, but for convenience sake, here it is. We're going to copy that and then go into GitHub Desktop. <laughs> Let's just use every build tool ever for no reason. All right, uh, current repo. Nope. I want to switch my current repo. Like, all this is delightful, but this is not my primary focus at the moment. Repository. No, I want a different repo. Clone repository. I don't know if I already have this one or not. Uh, okay, I do have this locally. Clone. Hopefully this will update my local copy. Um... For my own purposes. We're not intending to contribute upstream at this time. Um, so I've got this checked out now somewhere on my disk. 
So, are these the same thing? These are. Alright, fine. Wait, what? It said fetching upstream. Uh, uh, that's an interesting description of things. Because um, I'm very much the maintainer of that repo. I wouldn't I would consider that to be a remote repo, but not an upstream repo. Um, okay, an updated version is available when we installed at next launch. Maybe the new version somehow makes more sense. Uh, let's try the new version. I'm not super optimistic. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we can see the directory in Explorer. So this is where I would navigate to if I had to go in PowerShell. Um, Alright. And now I guess I start just typing the commands that I find in this here terminal. This is kind of nutty. at var.yml. So source is equal to um, I mean let's try it I guess. Okay. Source join by spaces and then replace all of the backslashes with slashes. Okay, cool. So we've got sources. All oh, and they even are delimited by spaces rather than that. Okay. And then we build this. So we do an assignment to dollar t, and if we echo dollar t, we get something back. Um how do I increase font size? Control plus doesn't do that in PowerShell. Properties. Cursor size. A quick edit. Font. Okay, as delightful as Consolas is is a font. Um wait, can I not select the liberation fonts? No, we can. Okay, there we go. Um, there we go. We got liberation fonts installed. Now I don't like the green theming there, but that's okay. Uh, echo dollar t. So, oh the okay. So those aren't evaluated by PowerShell. This is just a string literal set source files, etc. Okay. Um, so if I wanted to add a parameter, um, yeah, to, well, let's, I guess, try this as is, see if we can reproduce the build error, which should not be difficult to reproduce. Uh, I have no idea what any of this does, other than, well, I can speculate, but I've not read all the documentation. Um, okay, get the top line from the git log. Um, write the reference bench to the git log. Oh, <laughs> evidently. We're going to need Visual Studio 2019 installed. Um, I knew that. Our source or binary directory provided both be assumed to be the same as the current working directory. Uh, but note this warning will become a fatal error in future releases of CMake. All right. 
could not find Visual Studio. So if I want a non-visual build in Windows, I need Visual Studio. Or I need to substitute a different uh, build library. Um, so yeah, CMake here is what evaluates this file that we've generated, CMakeLists.txt. So now, oh, I guess this is like the parameter name and the parameter value, parameter name, parameter value. So if I wanted to try this in the cloud um, and provide my own parameter name and value, that might be a bit non-standard. Um, did I just like spell it out right here? Set use NNUE to on. It can't be that easy, can it? Um, we need. Sh we should read. Um, C make lists example. So they say to read the documentation. Don't just try to reinvent the wheel. It helps to know what documentation they're referring to, but. Um, yeah, the library. Okay, so I should try to read more carefully, despite being extremely impatient at this point. Um, I should attempt to be more patient because it will reward me later. Um, resources, documentation, CMake 3.18. I mean, we could upgrade this to 3.18 while we're at it. Uh, command line tools, interactive dialogues, reference manuals, and guides. Guides. CMake tutorial. The CMake tutorial provides a step-by-step -step guide that comments, covers common build system issues. So step one is... Um, an executable built from source. So we can set our project, we can set the minimum required CMake version. Um, curiously, yeah, so even though this is the minimum required version, this is not the maximum required version. Okay, interesting. So it's possible even though I'm specifying 3.17, maybe the app veyer is providing 3.18 anyway, so I don't need to worry about managing that right now. Project, configure file. Oh, so this would generally be where you would specify parameters like that. Fair enough. So maybe it's a mistake that I'm providing this use NNUE in the make file instead of in a header file. Almost certainly it's a mistake, but... Um, so... Build and test, add a library... No, that's cool. I just want to know, like, how I set environment variables. I don't need everything here and I think that uh, well I don't know target compile definitions compile options that's what I'm looking for I think um, We specified usage requirements for math functions. We can safely remove our uses of the extra includes. Um, all right, so yeah, can we take a look at target compile options? Adds options. Oh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Adds compile options to a target. 
How is this capturing on the screen? You can't see. Now you can. Target compile options. So, yeah, this. Um, it's good when names make sense. All right, so instead of calling set here, um, target before interface private etc. Um, whoops. Uh, adds options to the compile options or interface compile options parameter or target properties. These are used when compiling the given target which must have been created by a command such as add executable or add library and must not be an alias target. Alright, so somewhere here there should be a, there is an add executable. Um, so, uh, target. So add executable is defining a target of stockfish. Name macOS bundle excludes from all source one, source two, etc. So here this is saying for the same target name. Um, Yeah, use and then you uh, so before is an optional keyword interface public private items arguments if before supply the content will be prepended yeah that we don't care are required to specify the scope of the following arguments private and public will populate the compile options property of target public and interface will populate the interface compile options. You know, I should try to understand this, but also I realize that I don't need to. As long as I provide... Hmm. It's okay, like, if I declare this as public, even if it's not necessary to do so. Um, but, yeah, this isn't really a... If I understand correctly, compile options. This is just the verbatim list to pass to the compiler, not to some external thing. Whereas interface compile options, um, yeah, this is a list for determining huh, what the target link libraries for external library interfacing. Um, the neural network code that we're referring to is not an external interface. Um, so yeah, it, I think it'd be most appropriate not if I selected public, but if I selected um, private. Um, but it shouldn't matter. Um, wait, so this app veyer build, oh, I see, so there is no invocation of the make net target, which is in the make file, because, right, we're using CMake, so in lieu of having a committed CMake lists.txt file, instead we're embedding all of this into the YML, the app veyer configuration. Okay. I see. Talk about doing things well. Everybody's got their reasons for doing things the way they do. And this, I guess, cuts out CMake and tries not to use it while um, for network code. Yeah, this is a build step rather than um, something that's put into the uh, CMake lists file. Now, argument format 
for target compile options. Um, so private, I think, is correct because we just want this to be used for compiling our binary, not for linking with other libraries. It wouldn't matter, but... Um, arguments may use the generator expressions with dollar dot dot you see the CMake generator expressions for available expressions um, wait dash D a dash D B becomes dash D A B. So apparently um, not only does this take parameters, but you can actually um, well actually yeah, I don't need to specify on there. So I think this is right. Or maybe this is right. I don't know. See also, this can be used to add any options. However, preprocessor definitions and in include directories is recommended to use the more specific commands. Target compile definitions and target include directories. Uh, for directory wide settings, there's so yeah, I'm talking about a preprocessor definition, so I guess this is actually what I'm looking for. Um, oh, thank God. Any leading dash D will be removed, empty items are ignored. Thank you. But yeah, it's this is good that we are dealing with the pit of success. Wait. Target compile options, target compile definitions is what I've changed now. Okay. Um, this documentation is so well structured that even an idiot like me can figure it out. So, for my target, which is going to be Stockfish, I don't even care if I use public or private, but uh, these are used to determine the scope of the parameters. Private and public will compile with the compile definitions. Uh, public and interface will populate the interface compile definitions. So, the word interface compile definitions. Um, um, that's kind of like your linker. Um, no. Uh, regardless, I don't think this is going to be, this parameter is used outside of compiling my code. Um, oh, curiously, yeah, this um, this build configuration is going to hard code the neural network right into the binary, which um, it's great that that's a default behavior. But what's less great um, is that that's not configurable. So if I needed to produce a binary without the neural network, uh, we'd have to uh, disable use NNUE altogether, or otherwise um, introduce additional target compile definitions that would prevent such embedding. I see. Verbosity minimal. This is the other thing that made my uh, this complicated my debugging the other day. Um, I guess we're saving disk space or making it otherwise easy to see what happened. Um, 
All right. Um, public defu. All right. So I think we have enough information. If we look at what I've changed here. I removed an extra space which I didn't need to do, but suits my purpose because it makes this easier to read. Um, fixed a typo. Um, yeah, let's actually look up what a BOM is. CMake lists, BOM. So apparently BOM is a standard thing. Uh, I just don't know what BOM refers to, but maybe I don't care. Maybe it does refer to a bill of materials or whatever the same concept is that's used in Maven. But, um, yeah, evidently to find what BOM refers to with respect to CMake. Um, ask someone who knows, because the documentation's not extremely clear. Um, but yeah, let's give this a shot. Uh, get checkout B app bay or test. Get add. Well, we've already done the get add. Get commit. Test. Um, no. What do we want to uh, commit this with? Add. Uh, target. Compile. Um, use. And then you to stop fish. Uh, to see make target list. Uh, no, that's not even right. To see make compile definitions. Close enough. Um, at any rate, uh, we should see some attempt to build things. Whoops, I clicked something, but it didn't. Okay. So at Veyer test has recent pushes. This is actually attempting to invoke at Veyer. So we can watch in real time as this attempts to do something. You no know, artifacts found matching stockfish windows path. You no know, artifacts were uploaded. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Um, what did I break this time? <laughs> uh, shit. Maybe I didn't break anything this time. Interesting. Make depend error one ignored downloading make strip stockfish exe no file all right well i did something dumb that's no surprise to anyone um okay no artifacts found matching stockfish windows path. <sighs> Good God. Nothing's ever easy. Um, current build. Now, I thought a build here was constituted of multiple 
things, not just the singular Windows environment. I thought there were like four environments that we were trying to build with respect to. Um, okay, yes, I'm not completely crazy. We have four jobs. I think one for each kind of architecture we're trying to build for. Uh, our first attempt failed. Um, oh, so this is checking out from the master branch. Yeah, so I'm not going to be able to test my changes unless I actually put them into the master branch. Or unless I reconfigure the app fire build configuration. So this git clone branch equals master, that's not something configured. Is that configured in SWIML? Um, oh, branches only master. Well, fuck. Um, hmm. I'm not super happy about that. I don't know that it matters too much. Because I'm not going to be building on other branches super frequently. Um, Alright. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to... For purposes of conducting a test... Do not commit that to my master branch. Um, um, compile using branch. No. Because <laughs> that is my branch name. So yeah, let me change to master to app bear test, and we'll see whether this test fares any better. Um, okay. Please, please don't fail me now. Okay, branch equals app bear test. So this should contain. Haha, <laughs> thank you. Uh, not specified. C make error. Native communicator. Cannot specify compile for target private, which is not built by this project. Oh. Why is the target private? Um. So, I didn't think I was building for a target named private. Oh, I messed up. I got this backwards. This is how we need to specify the parameters. Private use NNUE. Um, okay, so then we need to check out at the or test add at there get commit um, push f and we're pushing the at there test branch again to the cloud so let's try not being dyslexic this time all right, that's delightful how this provides near instantaneous feedback. Whereas Travis, um, I'm just doing tons and tons of builds. Um, Travis, I'm having to refresh from time to time. Just, I don't know. Maybe just I have Travis doing too much work and it's not the most responsive thing ever. This UI is super responsive. All right, so cannot, okay, 
Net specify compile definitions for target stockfish, which is not built by the project. Um, so I could understand why. Um, uh, I think I know why this target compile definitions is not considered valid here. Um, so I think I have to first add the target and then add the target compile definitions instead of the other way around. So here now we define the executable target um, and we define the compile definitions to go with it. Um, that should work better. Um, then we'll check out that Vayer test here again. Uh, and there's our commit message. Maybe we'll get this before build number 1000. What are the odds? We're at 1.0.976. And I apologize if this is sending emails to anyone other than myself. It's not my intent to like wake anybody else up. But um, let's see. So now our error. Wait, really? Did I mess that up again? For target private. I didn't think I specified that the target was private. Um, oh. Well, so I did. Okay. So... Stockfish is the target name. Um, I don't know if there's a way to like say all branches, uh, but yeah, for my own sanity, we're going to try to keep the number of changes to a minimum. Get push force. So we're going to see if I specify the parameters in a valid ordering, do, do I get a meaningful result back? Okay. Wait, what the heck? No. Um, yes, yeah, so this provides the same error that Stockfish is not built by this project. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing so wrong with these set of commands when I'm resetting my history. Um, um, the reason I keep resetting the history is because when I do a git merge, I don't want to do a git merge squash and risk messing that up. So, that's a really stupid reason, but I just have my workflow, which kind of works for me, but it really doesn't. Oh, I see what I messed up. So, first of all, I need to do this. Second, this comma belongs at the end of this line. Uh, delete this comma, stick it um, here at the end of this line. Third, uh, before I do the git um, commit, uh, what's this command I was doing to, yeah, to amend my commit. Before I do that, I have to add the file that I'm intending to commit. 
So there's the file we're intending to commit right there. Um, and now if I look at my file that I just committed, I mean, you look at the file system, yes, this is what we intended to commit. Uh, get status shows like the current status of the file. Get log app. Um, get diff head minus one with head shows that I actually committed my file this time, which is probably a thing worth doing. Um, get add app bear, and then now after I added the file to the index, then supply the commit message. Okay, so uh, yeah, perhaps I will become more fluent in this. I mean, at some point I had installed like TIG. I'm still not totally fluent in TIG. Uh, that doesn't, TIG doesn't work super great with that dark background, just given my weird terminal setup stuff. Um, hang on, so file definitions stockfish which is not built by this project okay so failed three minutes ago so I've done a forced update of the Avair test branch okay here's our current build which is progressing farther. Um, yeah, so here we are, add executable stockfish, and then we're defining the private variable, or the private target compile option for the stockfish target. The compile option is use and then UE. And so while we're doing all this, we're learning a bit, of, a bit about AppVayer, a bit about CMake, a bit about the MS build system. We're learning everything all at once. If I can just type things correctly. <laughs> Otherwise, not much learning will occur. Um, oh, hang on. So we're compiling all this code. So a half kp cpp is actually one of the files that's configured by my, uh, uh, yeah, I think I've achieved my aim. So I've successfully supplied a target compile option needed for my build. And why was this build option required? This is required because well, this is analogous to what I've done for the GNU make suite or make tools um, which where did I supply that that's in source there's a make file um, wait oh yeah I could show yeah that's kind of a mess yeah, let's show the history of this make file, though. I just want the history of this file. Okay, there we go. So I added a new parameter in here, which conditionally enables some of my code. Um, it's actually worth noting, now that I understand how to provide um, compile options, uh, I can look into doing something similar for variants with my Windows build. I'm actually curious how my Windows build functions at all, given that I have not supplied like all of my chess variants. Um, so like here. I guess to find that out, I'd have to install Visual Studio and walk through PowerShell and observe what it's doing. 
but there's a large stanza in my make file which specifies here's the variants I want you to enable for this particular build. Um, somehow these are specified when building an atveyor or my atveyor build is not producing um, what we want. So um, shouldn't matter. One way or the other, this is just used for regression testing anyway, unless somebody's actually downloading these images. So yeah, we had a build success. Um, so I assume that this is not the official... Yeah, uh, I could look at what Nicholas does in his project sometime and see how he does Windows builds and LLVM builds and such if I'm actually curious about it. All right, so then we have the 64-bit platform. This should also work. Uh, it's a bit of a hassle that I'm, and perhaps a bit of a mistake on my part even. Um, get checked out. Get reset to head minus one. Get checkout master. Get merge abair. Test. So this shows exactly what I've modified here. Adding the private target option or the the compile definition option for my target stockfish. Um, yeah, so if, like there's other really complex build stuff that's somehow managed by Atveyor. I could take a closer look at, um, I mentioned Niklas's name, he manages a fork of my fork where uh, from time to time he, uh, at least in the past, and maybe uh, presumably for the future uh, will help me out with getting things built that uh, that are great for stockfish or that are good for leech us um, so um, yeah I'm glad to manage my source code I'm not super happy about having to manage builds so that's why I had to beg, um, and thankfully, Leechus devs are accommodating. Um, but yeah, it's nice that they can help figure out cross platform stuff, so I don't have to worry too much about that. Um, so yeah, we have a successful build in Atveyor. I don't know that if I downloaded this. Could I download these images? Maybe. Um, so here's our debug. Um, I'm not. Hmm. I don't want to deploy this. I just want to. If there are build artifacts, I would like to download the build artifacts. But this, yeah, we're not doing an official promotion at this time. Um, yeah, we're just going to push the current branch, which happens to be the master branch. Um, and in turn, yeah, I want to delete my test branch at Veyer test. And then verify. Um, that we have a successful build as reflected by GitHub. So there should be a very high likelihood of success here. Um, so the only difference between this and build 978 that we just did is this is happening off my master branch here with this commit. Um, instead of happening on a different branch with a different commit that says to use that other branch.
So that's the only difference here. Um, so yeah, well, I mean this got this far already. So in order to compile half KP, it was necessary for, um, yeah, this to read my uh, new parameter here. So there is some duplication in that I'm specifying this parameter both here and in my make file for GNU build tools. Um, it's not super great that I'm doing that. Also, I'm not sure if uh, 3.17 is the minimum requirement, but it seems to work for app fair. Um, certainly we are requiring the make standard uh, for C++ 17. So, and for what it's worth, like this file, as best as I can tell, this app veyer configuration, um, that's not just me and Leechess devs collaborating on this. If we look at the history of this file, yeah, this is also managed by the official Stockfish team. So, um, I will accept their future contributions to this file, but, um, yeah, I had to add my own target here. Actually, I don't think, yeah, this is something Leechess devs have not touched, at least in my repo. Uh, I'm the first Leechess developer who has, uh, modified this, and perhaps, um, what I need to do is uh, start defining other target compile definitions if I ever have to troubleshoot, God forbid, um, that my build works and that this is a Windows build like that somebody should download and use. Um, let's see, yeah, we're, we've become slightly more fluent in AppVayer today. Um, so that's exciting. Wait, artifacts? <laughs> okay, so this is how we push artifacts. I want the things that were built. I want those artifacts. I want to download them and see. I want to vey my app. <laughs> I think they mean convey, and they do explain this, but... Yeah, this is the AppVayer site, uh, the continuous integration pipeline that's f frequently used by parties other than me to automatically build and convey apps, um, both debug and release for various platforms. So I'm slightly more fluent in this than I used to be, just enough to be dangerous. Um, People are going to ask me, where do we get my project built for Windows? And I think I'm soon going to have an answer for that. Um, because I'm starting to understand. I've started to read the documentation. Previously, I didn't care too much about this app fair build because um, it was way over my head. Now it's slightly less over my head than it used to be. I actually start to have some understanding now that I've read some documentation um, because I had a problem I was interested in solving, which was I want to be able to build with or without my neural network uh, dependencies. And in order to get that working the way I liked to get that working in Linux, um, Granted, there was another option. Instead of in my code defining, um, let's see, so you saw the other day I had defined a position.h that, uh, where'd it go? If def use at NUE. So you have a positive check for a variable. I could have done something similar to what the official Stockfish team did with, um, where they put that, evaluate.cpp. 
um, somewhere in here they define like if a parameter if not defined and then you embedding off I could have used a strategy like this where I look for the absence of an off thing I just thought this is going to get confusing long term if I try to abide by this kind of strategy um, so, um, yeah, I prefer to avoid double negation or even single negation where necessary, um, or rather to only use single negation if necessary, uh, but try to abide by using positive definitions of flags and such. Uh, it just makes things easier to maintain in the long term, even a short term, there's a bit of a headache involved. So, yeah, if I wanted to build an app there without embedding the neural network, I would have to go out of my way to add this NNUE embedding off target uh, compile option to my CMake lists file that's dynamically generated. It's crazy to me that there must be some valid reason why CMake lists is dynamically generated as opposed to parameterized. Because um, CMake is a useful tool uh, for cross platform builds. Uh, it's really unfortunate, at least so I hear, that. Um, the official Stockfish team goes out of their way to maintain their own build tools, their own make file that has tons and tons of options. Rather than trusting CMake, they have this tremendously complex make file. And fine, this is the way they're familiar with doing things. This gives them the control they desire. Okay, good for them. Um, but yeah. I had to laugh a little bit um, so recently before my changes um, they had introduced like support for haiku where was that done so yeah they check the arch for so like here they're having to do some pretty complex stuff and historically I mean this is just evolved the way it has over time um, based on needing to address a single requirement at a time. There was never a need to replace this make file with CMake. But, um, yeah, they're having to check all these architecture flags. Or, rather, this is a list of all the valid architectures that they support for compilation and cross-compilation on Linux. Um, and so they sanitize whatever... Uh, architecture you're attempting to build for, fine. Um, but yeah, they recently, they said, mentioned something about Haiku in their build history, and I was amused. Um, yeah, is this it? Yeah, only use MADV random if defined. Required to compile on Haiku. Now this, admittedly, is a necessary uh, code change for the table based probe. Like, yeah, you can only use um, whatever sort of randomized access this is, or random access. Uh, you can only use this instruction if the instruction is defined. That, that makes sense. Or rather, here we're M advising. Forever ago, I once knew what that meant, but regardless, we're having to make, uh, I get that this code change is required, and this didn't actually require CMake or the make file to change at all, but, like, we're having to touch some, I don't know, in order to get a binary that works on every platform, and also, um, performs as well as possible. Uh, you're always having to strike this balance, so they have this need to touch some very low-level stuff pretty frequently. Um, so yeah, it's they find it quite useful to not be inhibited by CMake, 
because they're frequently touching low level stuff like this. Um, so I kind of get that. Like, there are advantages to not using CMake. However, there are also advantages to using CMake, so you're not constantly having to beg developers for information. But developers are more than willing to give you information in many cases or get in contact with somebody who can help them build on their machine or their friend's machine. So, because communication amidst all this incredible team. Um, I don't know how I find the contributor list. Uh, I mean, yes, there is the author's file, but that's not necessarily the same thing. So 36 people have committed directly to this contributor list. This contributor list spans, uh, yeah, 179 name, well, lines of code, 179 minus, like, 14, and there's a couple comments in there. So there's almost 200 collaborators, contributors, that are submitting code. Communication among this team is extraordinary. Things are well documented. There's an excellent build pipeline in place. This team has achieved many excellent things. Um, and not only that, but their code in general, as much as I complain about them making random changes to it, each individual version of this code um, does work quite well and is the easiest to read chess project that does the complex stuff that you'll ever find. There are easier chess projects that uh, build engines that are simpler than this, but if you're looking for a top-of-the-line chess engine that's open source, and you want to start adding your own uh, evaluation function or something. Uh, this Stockfish, either my version or the official Stockfish version, are pretty great. Um, you can just open up this code. You can see, like, here's if you want to change something endgame related, you change the endgame.cpp. If you want to change some, like, the way that a chessboard is represented, you would go into Bitboard. Uh, if you wanted, if you're wanting to try some like special operator that operates on bitmasks and such, so each this is a very modular repository. If you're wanting to change this main function and say like your name is awesome, um, yeah, here's the main function. Have at it. Um, if you're wanting to. I guess more practical would be if you wanted to print out something additional every time the engine ran. If you wanted to add like a, um, some sort of uh, cryptocurrency miner, you could put that right into the main function. Like this is open source. Um, doesn't mean people are going to download what you did, but yeah, if I wanted to like put a cryptocurrency miner into Stockfish, I would just go into this main function and call some third-party library and then at some point make this make a call to my uh, whatever my wallet would be and put things into it. Um, I'm not interested in that. I want to work with people and collaborate on good high-quality software. So I'm not like super into the whole mining thing, at least not in here, of course. But if I really were desperate for that sort of contribution, yeah, I, I guess I would have to do something like that. But I'm not in any way interested in that. But I'm just saying, like, if you want to modify this code, um, it's all open source. It's under the GPL license. If I were to add some sort of miner like that, you could fork my repo and take out my mining code. Like, uh, this license is super permissive. Basically, the requirement here is that if you're distributing... Yeah, in fact, the, this does allow for commercial use. So if I wanted to sell you a copy of my engine, I could sell it to you um, under the terms that I also have to give you the source code. So that would not make me a lot of money because I would sell it to one person and then they distribute the code freely since they have the license to do so. The 
um, yeah, this GPL license is brilliant and deals with some problems that um, had been happening even if, um, I don't know, just in general, there are problems in academia versus industry where industry would like to collaborate with academia and academia uh, wouldn't always hold the industry accountable to this sort of requirement for a license. So like sometimes the industry could submit code to certain people at certain universities and they would have a right to inspect it but not to share it even with their colleagues. Um, and so the GPL and MIT and other open source licenses um, set a standard and kind of embarrass the industry into sharing their things um, if they want academia to take them seriously. Now, it doesn't mean that like industry is always going to bow to the standard here, which is really any open source license. It doesn't have to be M MIT, it doesn't have to be GPL, it could be something else, but but it's good to have standards among engineers. So, um, and this is kind of why I'm so insistent that when people want my help with their pet project, I ask them, um, uh, is what you're working on an open source project that you're willing to collaborate with anyone and allow them to redistribute the repo? And if they say no, I'm not as inclined to assist. But yeah, no, I've helped several developers like add continuous integration pipelines to their projects so they could troubleshoot what's going wrong. Um, it's good to collaborate on open source projects. So yeah, AppVayer built with my changes. Um, I admit I'm still confused. Like, yes, that my master branch built I'm not really looking to deploy, but if there were a way that I could download one of these binaries, um, that would be kind of cool. Uh, old artifacts are not retained. Thank you. But yeah, this build did not include any artifacts. I think because the end of this configuration, the end of this appbayer.yml, specifies that only under some very special circumstances do we want to upload artifacts. I thought I saw that here somewhere. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I imagined it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I could maybe look closer into some of those things and start producing Windows builds just in general. I'm more than happy just to stay completely on a Linux platform and allow other people to manage all the Windows builds, but maybe at some point I'll be interested in trying to build on Windows and release on Windows. I'm not right now because that's too much for me to keep track of. Uh, yeah, so the official Stockfish team is still collaborating. By the way, even though I'm looking at this strictly in GitHub, um, there is a official Stockfish forum. Um, I don't know, I don't recall whether this repo links to it or not. But yeah, the site here is official, or uh, stockfishchess.org. If you want to get involved, uh, you can either contribute resources to their cloud, you can write code with them, or this is the forum that I was referencing. So like this, they have at least 200 people participating. This is too much noise for me. Um, but yeah, like here, if you're having a problem, you just communicate here, I'm having a problem, and the conversation will start here. This is where they discuss most of their ideas and such. Um, so if you wanted to be super active in this engine development for some reason, maybe you have some esoteric platform like Haiku that you're trying to build on. I'm not trying to be judgmental of Haiku. It's just um, amusing to me. Um, 
so much so that it made it into Monroe's uh, comic. Uh, I think people recognize this. Um, maybe they don't. But yeah, I think this is considered not the most mainline thing. Um, oh, they managed to... Like, this is a well-supported, different platform. Uh, compatible with the now discontinued B OS. Um, so, um, yeah, it's a non-profit. Uh, I don't know very much about it other than uh, it did make its way into popular culture by way of Monroe's comic. Um, I mean, I've certainly heard about it before. I've not had opportunity to explore it. Maybe I should explore it at some point. I don't know. But yes, yeah, Stockfish is a free, powerful library, etc. I should probably actually proofread this and check whether they need to update this document based on their latest release, but I assume it's all fine. Um, yeah, so they did specify this. So this has been updated. I don't know if it's been completely proofread, but uh, I think they've tried to keep this simple. Yeah, so they have use NNUE, they have eval file. Yeah, this all looks correct and up to date. Um, they even added a note here um, explaining uh, how both the benchmarks work and how you would use hmm. how you can at runtime. Uh, understand what's going on. So the NNUE evaluation was first introduced in Shogi and ported to Stockfish afterward. It could be evaluated efficiently on CPUs. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what is meant by evaluated efficiently. Um, but, cool. Uh, the Nod chip repo provides additional tools to train and develop the networks so if you need more resources this is where you go um, and CPUs supporting modern vector instructions and then you evaluate uh, results in stronger playing strength even if nodes per second are somewhat lower so this is excellent context um, so yeah the, this team does well at communicating both in its forum and in its official documentation. I'm impressed. Um, so probably I would understand things better if I were following everything that were discussed, or at least the main topics that were discussed here. Um, maybe a Google group's not the best place to communicate everything, but like this is where they've done things in the past. It seems to work well for them, so... Um, yeah, perhaps I should be a little bit more active there instead of just reacting to things on GitHub. Um, some people do communicate through GitHub and are usually told to just go communicate in the forum instead because uh, we want to provide every developer a chance to communicate and that forum is an open forum. Whereas uh, GitHub Everybody's got to register accounts, and like people might not see that you're trying to communicate here. So if you have something really complex that you're trying to do, it's probably best to articulate that in their forum the way they recommend. Um, so yeah, we've successfully done a Windows build. Um, not sure exactly what I built. Um, I maybe I want to try to replicate these results in PowerShell. Um, to do so, I'd need to address my own issues of, like, I need Visual Studio 16 for 2019. Or the 16 2019 is a version number. It's a compound version number. I don't know. But yeah, if I get that installed, I can replicate these results locally and then figure out what more I'd need to add to this for it to support all my variants likely what I'd need to add um, uh, is just like all this anti-chess, anti-helpmate, atomic, bug house, etc. I'd likely need to just add private uh, target 
compile definitions that would work in AppVayer to integrate with, or to pass those from AppVayer to CMake, so CMake can compile Stockfish with support for all the variants up in this cloud. I think right now all this is doing is just verifying that builds um, without all my variants um, uh, still function. But I might want to add four more pipelines. Um, so in addition to supporting x86 and x64, both debug and release, I probably want to do a variant build for each of these that has all my additional stuff. Um, cause yeah, I mean, it's great that I'm maintaining parity, um, on Windows builds if all my flags are disabled, but it could be interesting to actually enable these flags and deliver binaries that people could use on Windows and not bind everyone into a Linux platform, even though I'm not fully fluent in, like, Windows builds and stuff. Actually, I'm not totally sure if I could distribute these binaries or not. Um, I assume that the Visual Studio and CMake and such are licensed such that I could distribute binaries, but I don't know if I have a valid license with Visual Studio for nonprofit development. I don't know. There's a lot to explore. If I had to, maybe I guess I could start a fundraiser so that I could build things on Windows and give you guys the binaries. But right now, I'm uh, so far I've just been pursuing things using the free and open source tools, and maybe there's a way I could do such free and open source tooling, um, even with a Windows build, uh, and just stay avoid the whole um, embrace extinguish pattern. I don't want to embrace any commercial build tools that reduce my freedom to be able to um, build things in the future. Or um, So I would prefer to use completely free open tools to build Windows binaries that will give me the license and give you the license to be able to build things on your own as well. I don't know whether such tools exist for Windows. Like, Obviously, this build pipeline uses Visual Studio. Um, I'm not super happy about that, but this is just the path that's been chosen. At least on AppVayer, you seem to be able to run that for free. I don't know if you can distribute the binaries or not legally, but um, things build is the point. So that was a rant and a half. Um, so we verified that my build does function correctly. Um, and yeah, we can go over here. Oh, this reminds me. So the next step now, well, I'm installing for time. I trust that this build is going to complete on Travis because I haven't changed anything since the previous commit. Uh, my only changes have been with respect to AppVayer, not with respect to this issue. So, yeah, we should be able to merge the big one, two. Um, yeah, so we're going to close this since we've addressed all the known issues here. Um, are there other known issues? Like, yes, I want greater support for neural networks with variants. Not everything's going to make the uh, version 12 cutoff, and that's okay. Um, variants that do have support with neural networks, however limited, and I'm not saying that you always want to use the neural networks when running chess variants, but ones where it's at least possible to do so. Um, can be found in this benchmark.cpp file. So standard chess can use both neural network and classical evaluation. Anti-chess uh, cannot. Atomic chess cannot. Crazy house cannot. Um, but yeah, you can see from this list those which I've already gotten working, like king of the hill, where the object is to get your king onto the center square, or to checkmate. Um, 
this was not too hard to get working. Um, the others considerable work has to be done to figure out like how to um, I don't know and maybe I should take a look at that nod chips um, uh, repository and look at what tools he has to offer he or she that is um, yeah but just because this says mixed this means that when we run the benchmark um, that's sweet. There's a set of test positions per variant. And when we run all those test positions to a depth of, I think, 13 half moves, 13 plies, um, mixed indicates that we alternate between using neural networks and not using them. Um, whereas classical indicates that we're never going to use a neural network as part of the benchmark. Uh, so ones that are mar marked classical here um, indicate that if you try to run this engine using a neural network, uh, that's not supported behavior yet. Um, this is the best way I can think of documenting uh, esoteric stuff like that. So I complain about other people, but I should also look at the beam in my own eye and my own failure to document things. Um, I could write out a... Mm, I should write something. I don't know. For right now, I'm having to collaborate or explain myself, not in documentation form, but just as questions arise. I do my best I can to try to answer them. Um... I mean, all this documentation is accurate. It just doesn't, I'm just not specifying that this is going to work for all variants. There are some variants for which it does not work. And I have an issue to track that. Um, yeah, so perhaps I need to augment this already quite verbose documentation. This is verbose, but for a good reason, because this code's actually complicated. But um, but yeah, this is going to change over time as well. So I'm kind of reticent to add my own comments that'll fade to into obscurity. Plus, nobody's going to really read whatever I write here anyway. They're just going to try running it and report issues back to me. And yeah, we'll handle things in this kind of agile strategy where as people report things back I'll figure out how best to document them maybe I do need to like build out my wiki a bit I don't know probably not a bad idea but this is not in any way tied to my build um, like I can still committing I can still commit into my repo and I can make changes to this wiki independently So, um, yes, I'm stalling for time. We're going to wait until we get this green check mark here on the Travis build, which, okay, should not take more than another 20 minutes because there is a build timeout parameter of 50 minutes here, and no individual step is allowed to take more than 10 minutes. So we're stalling for time. We could check on um, how is my build going, or how is my bot running um, on Lee Chess. Is anybody challenging my bot? Do I need to challenge my bot because nobody has recently? I don't know. Recently, Weiss 1.1 had been released, and its author had been issue, uh, making the bot play against my bot. So this here is my bot competing against a human, bishop to c4. And we see that this bot, um, as predicted, the engine outpaces the human once more. Um, we could take a look at insights and update statistics. So this crunches, and if I build if I look at Cenopon loss by date, 
and I throw into this mix, uh, just compare with similar strength opponents and just the black pieces. Um, yeah, as of late, as of 2020-08-18, average sent upon loss has dropped from eight. 17.3 uh, to 9.2 against similar strength opponents. Um, I don't know. Well, I'm sorry. Let's just account for a blitz. Yeah, in blitz, it's an even more pronounced drop. How about in bullet? Okay, in bullet, um, I'm not sure. You have to trust the data. But you also have to like take a closer look at some of the data and see. Um, here's the last two weeks. The trend is that this engine's dropped quite a bit more. Could just mean a variety of things, but we have to take a closer look at the data to understand what changed here. Um, one thing that changed is I switched from the vect uh, bit, uh, vectorized bit manipulation instructions from BMI2 to modern in order to address some crashes that I had observed. Um, possibly we're beyond that point and I can switch back to BMI2 again. The only way we'll know is if I try it. Um, since I'm not sure how best to check whether or not BMI2 is supported as an instruction set. Let's take a look at my deploy script. Whoops, wrong directory. Here we are. Um, let's see here I comment or here I enable only parameters I need for playing variants on leeches. Um so yeah, I'd switched my build from BMI2 to modern. Let's switch it back. And try deploying that and see if performance, see if it, um, it computes more nodes per second and starts playing better. I'm still waiting on this, so. So I think I forget. Does this include a make clean instruction? Yes, it does. All right. Should it? That's a question for me to figure out later. But right now, I'm seeing that we're cleaning out um, files that we don't uh, from older builds, so we don't pollute my build. Um, so we're just going to continue waiting. And trying to figure out what this increase is about. I mean, we could start looking at some of the games. Here's the games in question. Um, it could be that maybe we're playing against different opponents. And somehow those different opponents, um, I don't know. They could be underrated. Uh, whereas maybe past weeks we played against opponents and they were appropriately rated or something. There's always some explanation. So, like, instead of looking at weaker and stronger, if we look at same strength opponents, this is an even more pronounced gap. So, yeah, maybe I messed something up and just with the black pieces this is a problem. Well, no, with the white pieces we had the same problem. Um, maybe my time management code has somehow gone awry. I don't know. But in Blitz, we see the opposite effect. That recently, it's been playing better at Blitz, although number of games has changed. So, um, yeah, it probably behooves me, once I get my build working, um, to go back to variantfishtest.org and start submitting some more builds to check for regressions the way that we've traditionally checked for those regressions. Um, 
So right now this is mostly building fairy stockfish. But now that I have my new parameter, I can parameterize my build. I don't actually know. Like here you can specify test options. These are not the same thing as compile flags. So if I wanted to compile my engine on this cluster, I would have to check out my code and then produce a fork. And in that fork, I'd have to specify, um, I'd have to manipulate this make file to change the default behavior to um, not do any of the neural network specific operations. So to change this part of the make file just so I can build on this cluster which does not support neural network architecture just yet. Um, so this cluster is primarily right now used for testing the fairy stockfish engine although it is capable of um, with some difficulty if I check out my master branch and then I produce a version of this make file that um, does not supply this flag. Um, if I change the default behavior to we're not going to include the neural network code. Um, yeah, maybe this is something I change before. I don't know. <sighs> I'm so confused. So, yeah, maybe I change this to by default, do not include all the neural network dependencies or that architecture. And then I could manipulate Travis um, to reintroduce it. But, so I'm. I'm struggling with a few things here. I want my code to build on AppVayer. I want my code to build on Travis. I want my code to build on GitHub. Um, ideally, I would like this to be compilable with or without neural network support. So introducing this flag is a good thing. The default value or behavior should be that we're going to use this architecture or at least support it, um, even if we're not using it. So to support that, yeah, um, this is probably the appropriate thing to do. And our benchmarks do test both with and without um, uh, using neural networks. But the architecture by default, the what I'm talking about here is that this entire directory, this NNUE architectures, features, layers, all this stuff, um, this uh, is built into Stockfish as well as some uh, evaluation code here. So by default we do include not only the eval namespace which we've always had for tracing and evaluating code or the evaluation function but new is all this neural network stuff and so now we have a flag to say maybe we don't want to compile with all this neural network stuff because we don't understand it all. But by default we're going to uh, have this enabled in every build. Except uh, I'm going to need a way to change that default for this cluster. Or I'm going to need to submit a patch to this cluster to somehow specify that default. That to specify an override to say no don't use any of the neural network architecture right now alternatively longer term I probably do want this is an open source project uh, the other engine that we're testing here fairy stockfish is also an open source project so I could contribute neural network support to both projects um, and then not have to worry about um, going out of my way to disable support for neural networks. Um, but yeah, right now, the official Stockfish team, um, and I think rightfully so, 
indicate that they don't want this neural network thing to be experimental forever. They would like to have, um, I'm sorry, the official Stockfish team has this policy that every time they commit a functional change, they uh, put the build number, uh, the number of positions that are evaluated during a benchmark run, they put that right into the commit message. So this is a reproducible build that can be verified by way of this number. If you just run the set of positions in benchmark.cpp, if, so if you're running that script, you should always end up with that number or something's wrong with either the way things are built or perhaps even your machine. But yeah, they have all these test positions and um, if you search these to a depth of 13 half moves, 13 plies, you'll always end up with that number or something's different um, on your machine. So they use that to troubleshoot whether or not your machine's behaving the same way as everybody else's machine. Um, and sometimes they've had to fix code that was um, using things like an unstable sort. Sometimes they have to dig in and fix some really low-level things or accommodate certain compilers um, uh, or certain architectures. It's like sometimes they do have to change the Stockfish code. Um, I mean, the most recent example of that was when dealing with large endgame table-based files. Um, yeah, we only need... So they introduced this. I don't entirely uh, understand how mAdvise works, but in terms of table-based probing code, we're providing a hint to the compiler about the memory alignment of something. Um, and uh, I guess we're providing an advice that this memory is randomly aligned. So don't always try to le read it consecutively from start to finish. Understand that we're going to try to do random accesses. I guess not a... Um, I guess this has some ramifications for how we map the file from the file system into memory. Traditionally, um, programs would... I don't know, there's, uh, compilers do tricky optimizations, so my point is like sometimes they have to dig in, these developers have to dig in and conditionally do tricky optimizations that affect the way some really low level things work on a wide variety of architectures. Um, and they do try to keep this code fairly abstract, but sometimes they do have to make low level changes like that to improve performance. Um, across most architectures and then they have to add flags to specify well that doesn't work on your particular arch that doesn't have a MADV random uh, flag or support for it. Um, so I'm still vamping. We've got our first build result. I said this uh, has to finish in 50 minutes or it doesn't finish. We're coming up on 50 minutes there. Um, so yeah, uh, I think I probably will at least try to change um, this test cluster code to be able to support using NNs because I think they're cool and I think like we could get better performance out of this cluster by using neural networks and I think the contributors, the collaborators that uh, submit their resources to this queue would be happy to know that their resources are wisely used. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a headache to get all that upgraded but this should at least guarantee backward compatibility for now. And hello, welcome again. Um, yeah, so I think this is probably part two of two of our Let's Build Stockfish 12 saga. Once we get the green check mark here, we're going to release the big one too. Um, that's the spot.
So yeah, we did some data mining here. Oh, I'm sorry, I messed up here. So I started a build. Um, yeah, let's actually do the deploy. So yeah, let's rsync this up to the cloud because nobody's playing against my bot right now, right? Yeah. So let's deploy all this and maybe play a game against my bot using the BMI2 instruction set. It should work. There are other ways I could test this, but um, and probably it's best that I use those other ways. So let's let's navigate into our cloud instance. So rather than issuing stop and start, let's just um, SSH into here. Uh, apparently there's a security update I should install on this cloud instance. I'll get that taken care of. I always do in a very timely fashion. We don't need to break what we're doing right now for that. Uh, so here I've got a directory engines which contains stockfish. Here's all the build parameters. We see here's use neural network default true. The same as stockfish 12 does. Um, so let's run engines, stockfish, bench, all variants. Let's see if we can, um, if this runs without crashing. It should. So that's good. So we have a successful run of all variants. Um, I now realize a bit of the folly of my ways here. If I wanted to troubleshoot, or to debug, um, let's do an actual debug build. So profile guided optimization, but with, uh, how about this time with debugging enabled? Yeah, let's put all the diagnostic code in place. Um, so that debug equals yes, um, compile target, no, compile parameter, um, will, where is it? Somewhere in here there's a ndebug flag that's normally provided, and I think now there's a ddebug, which enables all the debugging code. I could have that confused with something else, but basically now we're compiling with some set of flags that will enable the diagnostic code, um, the self-testing code that is bundled into the engine itself. That was most frequently used in the build pipeline, but you can actually run the diagnostic code on any machine. Um, so I want to run a test with that enabled. See, so yeah, right now this is gathering statistics, which should not take too long. And once we have those statistics, we rebuild the binary with whatever. Um, so this is performing a profile guided optimization build, which is taking all the statistics that were collected during the previous benchmark run and tuning parts of the binary somehow. I forget if this has license to reorder steps like full link time optimization or not. Um, all right, so let's deploy this instance up to my cloud. Um, come on, this can't take forever, can it? My cloud is not powerful enough to do this compilation, so that's why I'm doing this all locally. All right. It's still deploying. You can do it. That's taking forever to deploy and leaves me mildly concerned that this diagnostic code is like ginormous or something. Or I just forgot to hit the enter key. I thought I did, but um, yeah. How many bytes it sent? Uh, three million bytes, so maybe that is kind of a large binary. I don't know. So
so engine stockfish. Uh, wait, bench for all variants. Wait, what? Uh, if I can spell bench, I'll have better results. All right, so this is running all the diagnostic code. Um, for our test suite. So yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure this machine supports the BMI2 instruction set, or I would have seen an error by now. I can also parameterize this. I could say like, let's do instead of 16 megabytes of memory, let's do 128 megabytes of memory. Um, single threaded, or single PV search. Let's do dual PV search at a depth of 21. Um, so this search will run many, many more positions. Um, again, nobody's challenging this right now, which is a good thing because I would have to kill my test if somebody were to challenge this since it's running on a single um, CPU. So we have 144 test positions that we're going to be searching to a depth of 21 ply. Um, maybe while that's cooking, I should also, um, yeah, let's do a build for one second. Um, I'm going to mute for one second here. Okay, so yeah, maybe while that one build is going, uh, we should also perform a build, or while this is diagnosing, let's do an optimized build. Um, all right, Walker, Texas Ranger, the movie 3D was considered by Warner Bros. However, technology to create visual effects will never be possible. Okay, so yeah, let's remove the debug parameter here, yeah, make clean, etc. So, yeah, how's this test going? It's on 26 of 144. I'm sorry, that's 28, now it's on 33. So this is progressing. I know watching these terminals just go all day is like the most exciting thing for you guys. So let's watch um, some chess players play some games. Or we could even watch like there's a computer. People challenge my bot on this site all the time. There's bots, other bots out there that play fre frequently too. But yeah, people challenge Stockfish on Lee Chess all the time. So. Um, okay, I guess this layout will work. Or maybe I give us uh, this layout for now while I'm in the midst of building everything. Um, oh yeah, on Leech Us you can actually demand take backs. Forgot about that, so yeah, you see a whole bunch of pieces just jumping around. Chances are a human didn't quite like the outcome it got against Stockfish and is demanding a take back. And um, it's kind of nice that the site permits that. Um, okay, whatever. Um, I'm going to abort um, my test. Um, My new engine uh, up in the cloud. 
and that's up there now. And my size of my binary is um, half a meg. That's not bad. All right, uh, evidently this person's taking a while on their move. Sorry, my intent wasn't to randomly skip around there, but I'm trying to reset my screen back for this here. So let's check on, oh good, Travis advises um, that my latest build is successful, so we can check out my build history. So we've had quite a few failed builds. Um, wow, that's a lot of failed builds. That's okay. But yeah, if we look at my master branch, um, we have a positive trend emerging here. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it's good to have green check marks on the master branch. Um, so yeah, we have the go ahead on Travis. Um, if I'm reading that right. Yeah, so this successfully built on GitHub, AppVayer, and Travis CI. So, having so many successes, it's time to release the big one too. Uh, this is the moment. Um, I'm still gonna get some help with... Um... All right, here we go. Um... We're gonna merge. Hang on. Um, oh, I jumped the gun on this, didn't I? All right, so I've already got the official Stockfish 12 number released here. I didn't think I had that in my history yet, but evidently I do. Um, oops. Oh well water under the bridge at this point but yeah stockfish 12 got merged so we've done the big one two release and now we've fixed the build so this should work better now uh, on app bear oops well okay I had I thought that this was I was gonna merge this later at any event we've got things merged into my branch so I'm no longer behind official stockfish master um so hooray now at some point we'll still do the official release and so on and so forth but um so yeah this built successfully in travis and other sites um i had intended well maybe i've already taken care of this um so yeah, if I do a debug build without embedding this, this worked just fine. I'm confused why my builds have been so fast, but I can't worry too much about that right now. Um, okay, so make clean, check out master, um, Make net. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess the reason these builds have been faster than normal is because of this J6 flag to speed up compilation. Normally I use like J3 or J4 or something. Just because otherwise I get overwhelmed by all the output. Um, um, but yes. Oh, so. Yeah, let's verify one other thing, that if I'm embedding, uh, if I'm doing a default build here with all of the uh, neural networks embedded into the binary, does this still build? Um, so by default, I don't need to say NNU equals yes. Um, 
So let's have at it. This is going to run all the tests with all the standard parameters doing a standard debug build. If this completes successfully, then we'll go back and do a standard build um, without all the debugging. Um, but yeah, I think we have a successful build in all of our build pipelines. So Stockfish 12 is live, um, not formally released. I mean, they the official Stockfish team has done a SF12 release. I'm in position to do so now. Um, I'm kind of impressed. Oh, there it is, Stockfish 12. Yeah, so I messed up. <laughs> Um, normally I just print out the number, um, so I could get this to print out just Stockfish 12 instead of Stockfish 12 multi V. Um, that's a formatting error. I can fix that, but normally this just prints out the date of the build. Um, But yeah, it's live if you want to play against it. And it's using neural networks, so... Um, I think the real gain with the neural network is that there's some excellent tools for tuning them. Like, uh, the official Stockfish team has always been using... Um, well, they've previously been using SPSA-based um, tuning, which has many advantages. But, um, yeah, I need to take a closer look at what Nodchip exactly did that made this neural network so much easier to tune than the lists of parameters that have traditionally been used. Um, I imagine it's possible to tune both. Well, I do know a little bit about the neural network architecture that this bot uses. Let's play a game. Let's make sure this works and can defeat me. Um, all right. So one minute chess against my bot. Unrated. So yeah, this. Now there is a fully generic architecture uh, in that source NNUE directory. And it just considers bit masks of pieces on squares. As opposed to previously there were many, and there still are, many parameters that um, are in a human defined evaluation function. Um, I'm never going to win against my bot, just for the record, neural network or otherwise. Um, it seems extremely unlikely that I would defeat an engine at one minute chess. And I don't think um, changing the speed is going to improve my chances either. Oh, oh you sneaky, sneaky bot. Okay, I sacrificed an exchange. Let's pretend I did it on purpose. Um, yikes. Alright. Um, yeah, this is not going well. Let's try a sneaky checkmate. Oh, that's, okay, whatever. You win, Stockfish. Well played. Well played. So... Let's see, puzzle testing started. So it got through the first two tests, which are um, the move generation succeeded. Uh, following that, the set of benchmark positions succeeded. Now I have a custom set of variant, well, very few puzzles for variants. And um, just 
verifying that the engine can score at least 90% on that set of positions. Uh, just get the correct answers to a set of challenges. And then after that test concludes, the final test is, um, oh, the memory leak checker. Um, oh, this is cool. Uh, Shogi Harbor is studying games. Very nice. Uh, shall we play another game with our bot? I mean, how else am I going to stall for time while tests continue? Alright. Oh, nice. I gave myself the white pieces. Um. Maybe I should stop doing that in case, like, Maybe if I give myself the black pieces against my bot, then when I get paired with humans, um, maybe I'll get the white pieces more often. If there's a running count of how many times you get black and how many times you get white. Um, I should have taken the knight. Uh, I have take backs disabled. Um, I'm annoyed. <laughs> Shit. I've lost. I am losing so badly right now. Um, wow, that's clever too. So force me to push my pawns where I don't want to put them. I thought I had a square for my queen. Do I not? Okay, so now if the bishop retreats, you fork my queen and bishop. So I have to take here... But that change, that exchange of pieces is unfavorable. Okay, I trek, I threatened to checkmate you. All right, I fell for that mate on purpose. I could have just gone to h2 directly, but I was too stubborn. I had four seconds left. I wanted to see a checkmate. Um. All right, so yeah, zero memory leaks. This is good. Um, yeah, there's some more tests for it to perform. Let's see. Who else is playing against my bot? So, somebody's playing against AI level 8. The top level on Leech S. Um, oh, hang on, maybe I should update my stream title to no longer say, like, CMake and Windows and stuff. Yeah, because we are done with the Windows build aspect of this. Man, I had expected to just make so much fanfare and pomp and circumstance out of putting the 1, 2 in my project, and now I realize that it's already there. The release number got put in yesterday, and I accidentally published it this morning while troubleshooting other stuff. Yep, the AI can spot this... Oh, and then you have your take backs, of course. Yeah, this engine doesn't mind take backs at all. Um, maybe it should mind. Maybe at some point it'll take on more of a coaching role and help people improve their chess. I don't know. Alright, all my tests completed successfully. Um... And by that, just as I switch to this perspective, um, yeah, here we see, there's my bench, there's my terminal, which shows instrumented testing okay. This doesn't show that all the previous tests were okay, but they were, because my shell script executes all the tests in sequence and only executes the next test if the previous one was successful. And the final test here was making sure there are no memory leaks, etc. So yeah, my whole everything executed correctly um, for an optimized debug build. Um, as for a release build, um, I could set debug equals no and go through the same exercise. Uh, but yeah, this should be just fine. Um, 
So this time building without all the diagnostic codes in place. Checked out master. Already got the neural network downloaded. So, but yeah, we've released Stockfish 12. And trust me, this test will behave the same with and without debug enabled or not. Other, I'm going to come back and do another stream explaining why not. But yeah, this uh, this is great. This all works. We've released Stockfish. Well, I've built Stockfish 12. I've not formally released it in GitHub or had Leech us help me with doing orchestrating the release onto their site. But yeah, expect. Um, well. I can't say anything for certain, um, but expect a release either when Lee Chess can uh, afford their resources to help me orchestrate the release, or when I can afford the time to figure out how to orchestrate a release on Windows, Linux, OS X, Android, LLVM. Like, so it could take a long time for me to figure out how to build on every platform, but if I could figure all of that out, I might do my own release, but that seems most unlikely. I'd be much happier if Lee Chess could just help me out like they've done. Uh, they've done me favors in the past helping me get this released. I think they're all excited about this neural network stuff as I am. So, um, yeah, I'm going to ask them for assistance orchestrating release. We'll see uh, if they're if and when they're available for helping me out with that. And if not, um, it's all open source. Maybe you guys can help me do the release. I don't know. Give it time. All right, but yeah, we've been going for a couple hours at this point. We went several hours yesterday. Everything seems to be working as well as possible at this point, so this is probably the best point at which to call it. If you want to play against Stockfish 12, you can challenge it. Um, I will, I guess, update this to print out just the word Stockfish 12 and not put out this other weird string at the end. So, yeah. That's very exciting. Uh, thanks for watching. And have a good day.